Hey guys, it's Illusionist Jason Bishop. I'm back discussing another piece of magic. In this case, it's Robert Harbin and he is performing the Zigzag Lady Illusion. The significant thing about this is that he is the inventor of the Zigzag Lady Illusion. This illusion took off in the mid to late 70s into the early to mid 80s. You can still see some people perform it once in a while. It has fallen really out of fashion, unfortunately. I never performed it. It was definitely before my time. I might have seen it at a few, you know, magic shows once in a while when I was a kid. Um, it was very popular. It would be on TV. Mark Wilson did it. Um, I remember, I think Jeff McBride did it at one point when he was much younger. A lot of magicians, David Copperfield, I think, did this as well in some of his ver very, very early specials. It was just one of those illusions that was just really hot at the time. And Robert Harbin was probably a genius to some degree. He invented quite a bit of magic, most of it larger illusions, really in a time that I don't think large illusions were really all that particularly in favor. Um, he also later was a master of origami, which is kind of interesting and did TV shows on origami and, and things like that. I have to say, I wasn't looking to review this piece of magic. I was looking for another trick that he came up with, an illusion that he did, and I'm gonna find it one day online and I'm gonna share it with you because it's an older style illusion. It's a little bit slow, but once he gets to the point of the trick, it's a freaking unbelievable trick. And I really wanna share it with you guys and show it to you. I actually talked with somebody about reinventing that trick for today and how we could make it even more deceptive and more amazing, this particular one that, that I'm gonna find one day and show you. But right now we've got Robert Harbin and he's doing the zigzag lady illusion. Now, again, I'm a professional illusionist. I started my career in the Catskills and Poconos and cut my teeth there. And then I went on to do tons of colleges and then tour theaters across the United States. I had two successful shows in New York City at the famed New Victory Theater on 42nd Street. And now in between traveling, prepping for shows, doing shows, working on new magic, and, and everything else I have to do in life. I bring up videos like this online, I watch them, and I give you my thoughts on them as a professional illusionist. So let's take a look at this piece of magic. Again, it is Robert Harbin, magician, performing the Zigzag Lady Illusion in 1966. So this is, a, this is quite a while ago. Let's take a look. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here it is, the great carve-up. Miss 1970. Well, this is the apparatus we use, specially designed to do the job to amaze and to amuse. It's got three parts, the top, the middle, and the base. Interesting part is the middle bit slides over here like this, and when it does, three blinds begin to operate and close up the empty spaces. But it's a long way from you, and I'd like you to examine it. You can't do that, but one of you can. So while we are doing the warm-up tonight, I've invited a lady from the front row. If she's there, could you send her on, please? Uh, thank you so much. From um, what, uh, what did you say? Now, a lot of magicians may be critical that this woman wasn't randomly picked as such. I don't believe she is a confederate, that she's working with him as such to achieve this trick, and she certainly doesn't have to be. What he's about to do and have her examine this really could be done by basically anybody from the audience. For the sake of television, however, he probably cut the routine down instead of randomly picking somebody in the audience, throwing out a ball, what have you. Maybe in 1966, he didn't throw a ball in the audience or whatever you do to randomly pick people. Maybe it wasn't within the decorum of that time. I don't know. You just look at somebody and say, would you come up here? Would you like to help out? Um, so I wouldn't be critical of that. And the other thing is, is that even if she was a Confederate and working for him, which again, I don't believe she is at all, what she does in inspecting this box still conveys to the audience. The audience understands the elements. And that's something I'm seeing in this routine already. I did watch this beforehand because I wanted to see if it was worth sharing with you at all. And I do think it is because he is very thorough about explaining this box. And you don't really see that that much in magic these days. I mean, he is, he said there's blinds there. He said that this is made to deceive and delight you or deceive and amaze you or amuse you, that kind of a thing. I think that's interesting because there are a lot of critiques of magic boxes today and people say, well, if you could really do magic, then why would you need that? Oh, I don't know if you didn't know, newsflash, I'm not a sorcerer or wizard. I didn't, I wasn't endowed with powers like that at birth. I'm an illusionist. I'm creating illusions to, as he said, you know, deceive and delight and amaze you as such. This is an entertainment. I don't, I'm not in league with the devil, you know? I don't, I don't know why people think that way as such. We are performing entertainment that creates the look of something that is not actually happening. 
We're not, it's not a spiritualist movement or something bizarre like that. So his thoroughness, his thoroughness in this is actually quite interesting. Today, a lot of times magic is done at a faster pace without the thoroughness of explaining it. But magic really isn't just the performance of an effect, it's also the proving that that thing could not happen. And that's what he does here. So let's continue to take a look. Was Jean Jean College, you come from? Palmer's Green. Palmer's Green. So no, don't say the name of your house in case a burglar is there, you know. Well now, look, um, this is the gadget. I'm not going to ask you to do it, don't worry. There's a hole for the face. Would you put your hand through there, please? Put your hand through there, that's where her hand will go. Now there are more little doors here, all interesting. One here for an appendix. Now put your hand through there. One there for a, another hand, put it through there. Right, right through, go on, that's right. And, and down below, it's a place to put... I really like that joke. He opens this little tiny door and he says, one there for an appendix. And it's just a cute little joke and the audience laughs at it. But, you know, it facilitates the trick because it moves it along. Because these are boring sort of procedural things that don't, you know, aren't of interest. Nobody's interested in little doors and stuff like that. And yet he goes through it and he, he sort of lubricates the moment by making a little joke about there's one for your appendix that's a really good joke if i'd have thought of that i probably would use that i don't know if it would work today uh with today's tastes and jokes but i actually like that little joke so he's moving through this kind of quickly if you look at the construction of the box a lot of illusions that are very good today aren't actually made from wood anymore we have very thin metal and very good metal frankly today and it's a little bit lighter than it used to be and so the illusions that I work with are usually made almost exclusively or mainly of metal. And you can see that this is sort of homemade actually, which is interesting that he probably constructed this or went to you know, a, a local carpenter. And these carpenters are very skilled, but they're not magic carpenters. You know, the, the people who, who do magic solely for a living that make tricks for magicians solely for a living. These people are, they're carpenters and then they're up another level from that because there's a lot more that goes into making something like this than just normal carpentry. I can't get into too much of that, but but that's true. Anyway, so it's interesting to see that this illusion is pretty rough, frankly, it's pretty rough. There's very thin wood there. I bet traveling with that thing was a bit of a pain in the butt because that's not even multi-ply wood. It's very thin, it's not balsa wood or something like that, but it. I bet that thing got pretty beat up on the road. Maybe it was in a big hunkering case, I don't know. Let's Let's watch. Foot through. Would you stick your foot through inwards to show how it goes in? Uh, that's it. Got the idea? Look inside. Any more girls in there? No. Now, I'm not going to ask you to do this. I'll stand back a wee bit because we're going to have someone very special. And here she comes, a model from Mill Hill. <laughs> this is Carol. She's five foot seven. She's not a little girl. I'm going to ask her to get right inside. Oh, better take your shoes off, but that's all. Mm. And you see, she's, uh, she's not a little girl. Mm. Now, put your foot through, please. Madam, would you feel that really is a foot? You lean, lean down, that's it. That really is a foot, yes? <laughs> but as I tie this up, you'll, she's, she'll open the tummy part. Would you just see that that really is her tummy? Press your tummy against the front, please, girl. Yeah. You know, it's funny, as a young magician, you might be sort of critical of Harpin in this older style, but what I'm seeing in here, <laughs> wow. There's so much in this thing that, frankly, we use today in magic. There's a lot of this that we've maybe... You know, it's like the MTV generation, they call it, and now we have uh, TikTok and things like that, where and our, our entertainment, we process it a lot quicker. It has to get moving a lot quicker, frankly. Um, some older things, although they're quality, you may have to give it a little, you have to sort of forgive it a little bit of its time and give it a little more time because it doesn't move at the pace that stuff moves today. But this illusion, the way he's setting this up is so thorough. He's courteous, you know, he says to the woman, please, obviously did the cheeky joke. Is it the worst joke in the world? I think if that was an adult audience in a like nightclub or something like that, I think that joke actually is semi-appropriate today. Obviously, if he was being derogatory to the woman, then I would not be okay with that. The main point that I'm getting at is that all of these little proving techniques that he's doing, oh, Oh, put your foot out all of this we still do these things today but we sort of ask the audience to simply notice them on their own we don't overly indicate them like he's doing he's slow pace sort of going through please put your foot through here the foot comes out the whole door is open we can see that that foot sticking out continues her entire body line that that is her there there's nothing weird or unusual and we have this woman on stage to touch her and examine things and stuff right now she's poking her belly through that little appendix door there. And so these are all little provers, elements to show that what he says is happening is really happening. Let's continue. Sure, <laughs> right. And uh, put your hands through there, will you, Carol? 
That's the idea. Now put your hands through there and your face. That face has caused more accidents. Now I'm coming around there. Now you see, if we push this like this, we can't do it any further because her hand is in the way. So put your hand in, will you please? Now if we push further, we can't go any further because her, her body is in the way. You'd see that. Now would you hold your thumb there? That's it. Now you're in charge. Right. Just real quick, he's saying her body's in the way, her hand's in the way. We'll move her hand out and, and we can see her body's in the way now. Again, magicians today would skip that part, you know, and I, I, I think I kind of like it, frankly. I think that I kind of like that he's showing that, you know, what the physical certainties of sort of the physics of this box and her interaction with the box really are until he gets to the point where he wants to perform magic with this. I, I really kind of like that. I don't know that I would do it, but you know what? A little bit, maybe, honestly. It kind of reminds me of David Copperfield's Vanishing Statue of Liberty. We always know the cloth goes up, the cloth goes down, the statue's gone. But if you watch the whole trick of that, it is much more involved than that. He has a little radar system that's detecting the helicopter and the statue on radar, and he has multiple cameras around the Statue of Liberty that are locked in lock boxes that take photographs at different times. And then he shows all of this to show multiple ways that the statue has vanished. It's not just cloth up, cloth down, it's gone. It disappears from the radar screen, the photos show the statue ahead of time and then show it vanished and then they show it back, something like that. And there's a couple other elements that he had that I, that I can't exactly remember. Just the helicopter floating in the air was an element that was like, well, that's there and they shine a, a spotlight through it and, and it's gone. So there are multiple provers and that does help uh, make the thing a little bit more amazing where you go, wait, it couldn't be this, it couldn't be this, it couldn't be this. And that's what Harpin is, uh, Harbin is doing right here. So let's get to the rest. I'm gonna probably link this original clip down in the description box so that you guys can watch it all the way straight through if you want to because I've interrupted this way more than I do most videos. But I, he does so many little things that I think are important to point out. So let's keep going. Now, uh, to make it possible to move it from there to there, we have to do this. So. Rolf Harris noise. Over there. Now, do you see it coming out the back? That's so, yes? Yeah? It did. All right. Now, this is the one that hurts me far more than it hurts you. But... Tell me if it comes out of the back, will you? Through? Now, I want you to push, and I am going to pull. Right, a big heave. And... Over there. Feel a hand, please. Feel a tummy. Put... Okay. Come around this side, come around here. Okay. Feel a hand. Yeah. That kind of blew me away when I pre-watched this, and I generally don't pre-watch these, like I said, but I wanted to just see if this was worth it. That 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 is why I actually uh, picked this video to watch right now, because when he pushes that all the way to the side, that is such a good trick. And I know what the zigzag is, I know what it's about, I know how it's done, all of these things, and I and I don't think much of it anymore, but this is the creator of it, and the creator of an illusion very often understands the illusion a lot better than the subsequent performers of it because, you know, he understands the nuance and why he did this and chose that and how the things work. And if you look at that illusion, how sort of shabbily in a way it's put together, and I don't think that's part of the concept of, of the trick for him. This is 66, obviously, but um, it's, it's in pretty rough shape, frankly, but the trick nails you, it nailed the audience. It seems to have nailed this woman. I believe her response was, was legitimate, that she was like, what? But how far he pushes that body over there that you know she's in three distinct pieces now as such, um, I actually think looks really good, I gotta say. I, I think that looks really, really good. So let's continue. Now look, touch your tummy. Breathe in, hold it, breathe in. Breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, good girl. I've never seen anybody do that, and maybe everybody does it. Again, I was a little kid when this was falling out of favor, frankly. Uh, you know, when I was coming up, it, most people were not doing this trick anymore. It was just kind of passe by that point. But I do not ever recall anybody doing that little prover, and that is, again, to my point, is that the creator has these little ideas and nuances and provers that subsequently we lose you know, favor with. And now why in part you wouldn't do that is because a lot of times people don't have someone on stage examining the elements of the trick. They just do it as a musical piece or something like that. And so they don't have an audience member on stage checking this out. I sort of think that her on stage actually benefits this trick quite a bit. She's there, we see her response and we, 
we take our response slightly off of what she's doing. We put ourselves a little bit in her shoes and when she's amazed by this and that, we go, oh really, if I was there, I would be as amazed as she is, you know? But that breathing in, breathing out on the stomach, I've never seen anybody do that, maybe on any illusion, certainly not on a zigzag. And I think that is a great little addition, a little nuance like that, that's really cool. All right, let's, let's finish it out here. Satisfied? Thank you very much. Will you go back to your seat? Thank you very, very much indeed. <laughs> well, now, Carol has a nasty gap in her economy, so let's put her right. She'll need three dressing rooms now. I heard you then. You ready? You there? Hey, oh! Oh, you there? That was really interesting. I don't know if this video will appeal to, you know, the public as much as magicians or even magicians as much as maybe I feel like it should, but I'm glad I got to see that. I thought that was really interesting, actually. I've not seen a lot of Harbin's work. I've seen a little bit online. Uh, like I said, I was pursuing one piece that I had seen uh, him do previously that I think is a really neat, deceptive, interesting piece of magic, and hopefully I'll find it one day and get to share it with you. Uh, that illusion was pivotal in the 70s and 80s, like I said. I mean, you saw it on, Bill Bigsby had a show called The Magician where he was like this adventure guy who was a magician and he would solve crimes using magic, you know, tonight at 11 on a very special episode of The Magician. I mean, it's kind of like there was a show called The Mentalist a few years ago, that same kind of a thing. And he did this trick on The Magician. A lot of people, frankly, have done the zigzag girl illusion and I, I like that, I really like that. I like the part where the body goes over. Sometimes an illusion isn't necessarily the whole performance. Sometimes it boils down to just one look, one scene on stage. And in this case, it's when that last push goes over and her body is completely separated. It's a good illusion and it looks really cool and it looks amazing and impossible and, and really neat. You know, the way he did it, he got roughly four minutes out of it. That's really good. But if you're gonna take this new sort of paradigm of doing magic in a lyrical sort of music way and, and really quickly, well then that illusion is only gonna get you 40 seconds of actual performance time, maybe a minute of actual performance time. And if somebody doesn't wanna carry around a 150, 200 pound box in a case and have to get a van to be able to do that, I can't really blame them for that, honestly, if they don't wanna do that. If they wanna perform a piece of magic, that gets them more time. Now if you did it like Harbin did it there, then you would get more time out of the illusion and it might be worthwhile to pursue. I could see a creative young illusionist bringing that piece of magic back, performing it, and audiences absolutely loving it. It's also partially a personality piece that way as you walk through it. You can be charming, you can have jokes. Obviously this is from 1966, so there were some sexist things in there that have absolutely fallen out of favor, which is good because I don't like some of the little snide remarks that he made. He wasn't being uh, particularly demeaning in his mindset at the time, but you know, as we've sort of matured over time and morphed a little bit, we've recognized that some of those comments are, are not necessarily uh, things we wanna say. They're a little bit, uh, I don't wanna say offensive per se, but they're definitely uncomfortable and they are not necessarily needed. The illusion was really great. Absolutely, I'm glad I got to see this. You know, I say that a lot, that I'm glad I got to see this. You know, when I started my career in magic, I watched magic, if I could, I'd watch it for hours a day to learn uh, from these magicians. And after a while, you sort of stop doing that so that your performance isn't tainted or affected because you want to have your own personality. And now that I have developed my own personality on stage, to come back and look at this and learn other you know, see other magic from other magicians is really inspirational. And I certainly can still be influenced by them, but I have no great fear that my core personality on stage is going to be overly affected or that I'm gonna adopt or God forbid steal somebody else's personality to perform on stage because mine is at this point developed enough where I feel like I sort of know who I am. That was fun examining Harbin's presentation of that. Again, Harbin invented a lot of magic. He was a master at origami. He sort of 
helped westernize origami, bring it to the West, really, actually. He was an expert in that. And obviously, the dude was super smart and really creative as an illusionist. As far as his performance style, it's interesting because I'm not a huge fan of it. I think he was competent, and I know he was a performer for a lot of his life. I don't feel that he has the polish, frankly, in some of what he did there that you saw later with people like Siegfried and Roy, David Copperfield. They were just a little bit smoother and more polished, and I don't know where that divide came from. I think at a certain point, singers were sort of singers and actors were sort of actors and and magicians were magicians and maybe you didn't have to be as charming or as polished or move as well you just had to do a magic trick that was really amazing and he was able to do that now he certainly was charming in some places uh, and he certainly was polished in what he wanted to say and where he wanted to go but like at one point her shoes were still on the ground and he kicks them out of the way kind of in a clumsy manner that he hadn't pre-thought where those shoes were going. Today, you would normally know where every element on stage is and where it's going to end up and you wouldn't just haphazardly kick the shoes out of the way. It, it reads a little bit rude, frankly. Um, and some of the way he handled, he forgot the blade at the end. I don't know if that was actually part of the scripting or not, I have to say, but it didn't seem like a great addition to the, the piece if it was planned and, and the woman had to remind him there. He was definitely a good performer. Was he as polished as people who came after him? I, I would say not, but you know, so what? Everybody builds upon the last thing. You know, we, you can't just think like, I came on the scene and I was the greatest thing. Yeah, but like you're on the shoulders of giants, you know, just because you can see further, don't forget, you're standing on the shoulder of giants who came before you and they blaze the trails ahead of you so that you can be where you are, so that your career in magic, your life in magic is just a little bit easier maybe than they had it because you can look to them as an example. And we're in such a great age because it's not even VHS tapes and DVDs. You can go online and watch hundreds, maybe thousands of hours of magic and explanations like this about magic and learn from them so easily today. And so we have to thank all of those people who came before us and did a great job of blazing the trail for us. So that's my take on the Robert Harbin zigzag illusion. I hadn't seen him, I don't know if I'd ever seen him do that before. It was, it was definitely a lesson. It was definitely really interesting. So again, if you need some new magic tricks or you'd like to learn magic, there's a link below. This is to Vanishing Ink. This is an online magic store for beginner, intermediate, and advanced magicians. This is an affiliate link, so if you purchase anything, it does help the channel and we absolutely absolutely genuinely appreciate that so do not feel compelled to get anything but if you need some magic there's the link if you enjoyed this video please destroy the like button if you'd like to see more videos please subscribe and it does help if you hit the bell to get notified so thank you guys for watching and we will see you in the next one